fighting in 1963 of the arch. This is to symbolize their contribution and their support of the Chinese community and the community as a whole. And at this time, I just want to say thank you very much. Aloha, mahalo, toje, shishe, and mabuha. Thank you uh, so much for inviting Don and I to uh, be part of this auspicious occasion. It's just like Eddie to add it, right? All of you guys have worked with Eddie before, but uh, I really am proud to be part of this unveiling here today. Um, and I did want to thank Central Pacific Bank for hosting, uh, and I really wanted to thank a better Chinatown, uh, Eddie, for his inspiration. You know, the Chinese immigrant story is the story of Hawaii. Um, you know, we're a community of immigrants, whether we came from Okinawa or Japan or China, uh, we all have that same kind of beginning. You know, that's what this celebration is about, the Chinese American immigration story, the 14 cornerstones of the Chinese American community here who can trace their roots back to immigration stories very right to really leave it better than the Hawaii that we all received from our previous generation. We said a proclamation uh, proclaiming today, February 22nd, 2022, as Honolulu Chinatown Kekaliki Archway Day uh, in commemoration of this event. Certainly looking forward to the construction of the archway and really establishing the boundaries of Chinatown and being an inspiration for us to tell the Chinese American story here in Hawaii. So congratulations to all the honorees, congratulations to all of you for being here, and I think most importantly, thank you for sharing the immigrant story, the foundational stories of these members in the Chinese community who have committed their lives to making a better place. Thank you so much. Floors and Governor Ige would be so difficult, uh, but that was really great. I think you know you, see, you really said it all, and so I really want to pick up on that just spirit of commitment briefly because I'm going to actually read the proclamation from the city and county. And I only I can tell you since I think anybody who knows me, I'm, I'm Italian, one of Italian parents. I had the same immigrant experience, grew up far far away in Cambridge, Massachusetts, but was blessed to come here at 18. Been really blessed in my life in the last 20 years to have Karen Shank, my wife, who was born in Beijing, worked in a refugee camp in Taiwan. And she's not here tonight, but I will tell you, I'm very proud as the mayor to read this proclamation. I'll only say one other thing. Our actions will speak for themselves. We have made a serious commitment to Chinatown, as evidenced by the work we've already begun. Admittedly, COVID was a bit of a distraction, but that's not an excuse. Tomorrow night, we have a big report we're giving up at 18 of my department heads. It's highly collaborative. Two uh, members of Chinatown. Uh, there's a lot of work that we will do. I'm thrilled about this arch being built in Kekalike because we are about to spend several million dollars down there on what really needs to happen. But if you've been following the events in Chinatown in the past year, I think you can see we're really serious about that commitment. So it gives me great honor. And I'm going to read this because of the nature of the evening here. Since you didn't read yours, Governor, if it's okay. All right. And, I'm going to actually give today two different names, I think. <laughs> so this proclamation says, whereas Chinese archways are closely associated with Chinatowns everywhere, 
symbolizes the relationship between the local Chinese community and the host society, and recognizes the Chinese contribution to local cultural diversity. And whereas one of the oldest Chinatowns has brought together key leaders of the local Chinese community to form a Better Chinatown Association, a nonprofit organization dedicated to funding and constructing a Chinatown Arch, and working collaboratively towards a safe and vibrant Chinatown. And whereas the Honolulu Chinatown Keikaliki Archway to be built at King and Keikaliki Street and Keikaliki Streets will represent the heart of a generational Chinatown, guiding people to and from the planned Honolulu Transit, Rail Transit Station at Keikaliki Street and News Highway. And whereas the names of 14 prominent members of the Chinese American community will be featured in the CKIE, businessman and philanthropist, Sao Ang Lu Chan, attorney and community activist, Clarence T.C. Ching, businessman and philanthropist, Chun Kwong, businessman and community activist, Hiram Fong, businessman and U.S. Senator, Chin Ho, entrepreneur and real estate developer, Constance Thug, businesswoman, banker, and an overall great person. <laughs> I should have put that in there. <laughs> tai Hiong Kong Lee, physician and community activist. KJ Luke, businessman and philanthropist. Lung Yip Ki, businessman and real estate developer. Joanna Sullivan, businesswoman and philanthropist. Lauren Sayu, philanthropist and dentist. And another great human being. <laughs> CT Wong, businessman and banker. And Joseph. W.C. Young, dentist and community activist. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, it says a little bit more in there, but I want to be sure to say their names out loud. Catherine, I'm so proud of you for hosting this event tonight here at Central Pacific Bank. And just as this has changed the landscape of that, February 22nd, 2022, as Honolulu Chinatown Archway Day, I think the governor's title was even better than mine, but either way, we're very proud of this. I thank all of you for being here tonight. Let's enjoy it. Thank you. My thanks to the governor and the mayor, and just listening to you speak, mayors, I think about where we're standing here today in our special atrium, really on one end of downtown, and then of course with Chinatown to be on the other. So this is a very special evening for us to celebrate the vision of this Chinatown Arch. And then finally I'd like to close by just talking about the pioneering spirit of the 14 honorees. And I hope that we all are inspired, I know I am. Please enjoy the evening, this is an evening of celebration, and thank you for coming. Good night.
Who are you? I am Jessica. From where? So I actually <laughs> am with Independent Media right now, and we are. Okay. I'm kind of curious right now, as you have your mask off, I'm gonna take mine off yeah. too. So I'm so curious why right now we still have our mandates happening with a safe access to Oahu when every other. Well, safe state access to Oahu right yes. now is going to ex expire on December. Uh, so why not now? 25th. Because that's when our proclamation ends. We're going to sunset it then. But why not now? What's the difference of that date to now? Because, because I mean, think about every other state. You know, you we're know even what? behind we, with California. We have been in steady conversation yes. with all the leading medical people in the right. state, right? And we agreed and projected we were going to sunset on March 5th. That's the only restriction that we've had in place. Right. And not only that, just so you know, we worked really hard with safe access not to close all of our restaurants down during Delta. Right. Okay? And it worked. Now, if you talk to the restaurants, they will tell you it was very effective. So, right? so are you talking about the thousands of that were actually closed down due to all of this that, because that they couldn't that survive? That was because of safe access. Of actually, that's exactly why. Well, you know what? Can you prove me I otherwise? Disagree with you. Yes, I can. Okay, how so? Yes, I can. You have to do Where's a look at the data? economics at the time that they were closing. Okay, you know, so I'm, I'm so going to so end this curious. conversation I'm right now. I'm just so curious. I thank though. you very much. Well, I'll tell you right now. I'm I'm feeling, thank you very I'm much. You're not appropriate. You cannot put your hands on me. You're not appropriate right now. I don't want to Are you representing the right people? Now. I am representing me. Yes, the I am. Okay, so then I let's have the So then have conversation. Well, one thing. Can we have a town hall? Sure. Can we actually open up oh, yeah. conversation? Can I bring the restaurant association to you? I would love that. Because I'm being that. recognized by them next week right. for the work we did. The irony of right. you challenging me on this so you're is the, amazing. Really? So you're saying the only the only thing that's an issue is safe access to Oahu? Right. But do you know how many restrictions are involved this in that? Do you know how many people that you're discriminating against? Do you know? Anybody. You're actually discriminating against too many, many people. Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, yeah, I need to ask you to get bleed outside, please. I tried making the bleed. Thank you. Even the ACLU. observe an event that Governor Ige was at, which was crazy wait, because wait, wait, he's... Wait, wait, start over. Aloha everybody, this is Jessica Priya. We are currently at an event. We got a tip from a fellow citizen who decided to tell us where the mayor and the governor were gonna be tonight. Perfect timing for us to show up and ask certain questions. There's no better time than now. What we were told when we arrived was basically we were at a sp private event and in this private event, I had the opportunity to walk in and speak to Mayor Blangiardi. And one is, what's the first and most important question? Why have we not ended these mandates when every other state in our country has? What is the difference of March 6th to now? Why not right now? What did he tell me? Make an appointment. Now is not the time. When do we get a town hall meeting? Make an appointment. The deflection was very real. It was very um, cool, calm, collected for me, although I was surrounded by security and kind of maneuvered through the crowd. Regardless, the basic answer that we got is March 6th. I don't have the answers to when the indoor mask uh, mandates are going to end, but 
you know, I represent the people, I'm a very proud man. He didn't like when I said you shouldn't be proud of the businesses being closed. He took a huge offense to it. His whole demeanor changed after that and you'll see him going through the group. Um, but pretty much this is exactly what winds up going down in Hawaii as a whole. We the people are not being represented. So my message to all of you and we the people for representing the 808 right now is to contact your public officials. Why are you not representing us? Again, you guys, this goes to your district, this goes to your precincts. Get involved, start questioning them all. They want to say they're available, but clearly they are not. They run away and they hide, as you will clearly see.